Alright, now in this last presentation I'm going to tell you why everything you learned in the last two presentations has mostly become obsolete. Um, unfortunately, basically, with the advent of the internet, VPNs have taken over, so uh, here we go. The idea here is that as we move to an internet-based system, uh, we don't need these private WAN technologies like point-to-point -point tunneling or frame relay. You can just use the internet. Because every business needs an internet connection almost, it's an easier to just use this existing connection. You don't have to buy an additional lease circuit for your WAN. You can just use the internet as a point-to-point -point connection. Um, because of the inherent insecurities of the internet, however, we need to provide these four things. You'll need to know these for the uh, CCNA. These are the four things that we worry about when we establish a connection over the internet. So, uh, different types of virtual private networks. Uh, an intranet will connect sites within an organization for local access. An extranet will connect sites between two different organizations. And then an access VPN is going to connect an individual host to a bigger network. Now, VPN-capable devices, there are lots of them. You have routers, you have ASAs, you have PIX firewalls, you have VPN concentrators, VPN clients on an individual PC, and there are lots of other ones, too. VPN is becoming more and more popular. IPsec VPNs are the type of VPN that we're most concerned with. IPsec basically provides a framework for secure packet transfer over the internet. So it hides data from the internet using encryption. It provides a method for common, for common key for encryption and it exchanges that key in a secure manner. It provides for message integrity to confirm that the message doesn't get changed on the internet while it's there. It also provides for authentication to make sure that the sender is trusted and the receiver is trusted. So encryption and key exchange are the first two things we'll talk about. For encryption, you can use DES, you can use triple DES, triple DES, or you can use AES. I would recommend using AES. It's the more popular encryption standard today, and it's the most modern one. DES and triple DES have been kind of uh, exploited several times, so I'd recommend against using them. For key exchange, you do what's called a Diffie-Hellman key. And this Diffie-Hellman key exchange process is uh, uses IKE, so typically you'll see IPsec IKE on uh, some VPN configuration dialog boxes. And this Diffie-Hellman key exchange actually happens, and I've got a nice little diagram for that. Diffie-Hellman uh, 1 uses 678, Diffie-Hellman 2 1024, or there's Diffie-Hellman 5, which is 1536 bits. This Diffie-Hellman process is fairly CPU intensive, so, and this is for a one-time key exchange. So this is the idea behind Diffie-Hellman. This is what we're doing. Uh, so you have some sort of a common paint, or in the case of uh, the computer world, a common key. You also have some sort of a secret color or a private key that belongs to you and you alone. Only you know that secret key. Now, what you do is you mix those two. You hash them, actually, or you use the modulus function in the case of actual Diffie-Hellman calculations. Or in the case of paint, we're going to say we mix them. So if you look at the paint on either side of these, you have the orangish paint on the left and the bluish paint on the right, and uh, light blue and kind of a lighter orange color. And if you just look at those, you're not sure what two colors were mixed to get there. Same with the blue paint on the right. You don't know what colors they used to start out with. And so if we send them over the public line, it's completely okay. We don't have to worry about trying to, you know, secure our private key because our private key isn't being sent directly. It's being combined with the public common paint and sent across. And the, and, you know, anybody who tries to look at these individual paints will have no way to reverse engineer those. Now, if we look at, you know, once the keys are exchanged, they hash their own private keys in with these other private keys, and then they end up with the same color. I think that's pretty cool. I think that process is pretty cool. Now, this is obviously not done with paint. It's done with math. Uh, and the process is basically the same as this, though. I thought this analogy was a very good kind of analogy for this uh, Diffie-Hellman process. So now we talk about uh, integrity and authentication on an IPsec network. Message integrity is done with what's called hashed-based methods authentication. And you can use different hash-based method authentication. Uh, HMAC MD5, which uses an MD5 hash, which is a 128-bit hash. Or you can use SHA hashes, um, which is a considered HMAC SHA. Authentication is typically done with either pre-shared keys or digital signatures, uh, which is RSA. Encapsulation for IPsec is fairly straightforward. You can do what's called encapsulating security payload, and it supports all the features that we've talked about. And basically what it does is it takes your IP packet and puts it in an outer IPv4 wrapper and encapsulates it. You also have what's called IP authentication header. This supports only the authentication and me message integrity portions that I discussed earlier, and unfortunately it does allow for replay attacks, um, but it just adds a simple IP header to the packet, so it's not actually going to uh, have as much overhead as ESP does. However, it's obviously a lot less secure. 
There are some other types of VPNs that you should know about for the CCNA. EasyVPN basically allows a number of VPN clients to go out through a VPN server to get their configuration, which is really nice when you need to do a lot of different site-to-site -site VPNs. There's also SSL VPN, which allows users to connect to web services using SSL. It only allows web traffic typically, but it also supports what's called a thin client, which allows other applications over the VPN. That just about wraps it up for the CCNA printing and for this presentation. So if you guys have any questions or comments, leave them below, and I hope to see you guys later on and in the future.